Joining us now for newspaper review is Vimbai Mutiniri Ekpeyong. Good morning, Vimbai. Good morning, Ayo. Morning, How Vimbai. are you? Good morning, Rotus, Dr. Avati. Good morning, fantastic. And yourself? Yeah, they called you Rotus. Did I? Oh my goodness. I know. Please, Vimbai. please check what, I take it check back. what in the coffee should drink. Check what's in my coffee, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. My sincere apologies for that. Just a Vim, slip Vim. of the tongue. I How supported are you? you today. I said you should fire Harris with that interview. Did you say that? Yes, I said she was not No, but you know I'm you unbiased. Know. I don't have a dog in the race. I just stand for both sides of the story. I'm I'm pro <laughs> the truth and whatever the Americans choose for themselves. Let's kick off our newspaper review today because we've got so much going on and so little time. There's never enough time. We begin with this day newspaper, of course, our newspaper of record. And this day is leading with some economic news today. Uh, it leads with NEPC, the non-oil exports, exports yielded $2.7 billion at half year. CBN survey reveals businesses anticipate lower inflation compared to households, and they say rising costs push Nigerians into debt amid optimism. So, of course, that was yesterday uh, at that presentation uh, with the CBN regarding non-oil exports. This conversation has already been dissected at length. Above the masthead, whistleblowing policy. FG recovers over 83 billion naira, 5.4 million euro in six years. Of course, another conversation that has already been dissected at great length here on the program. And just to reiterate that we see what has been happening with investigative journalists who've been trying to blow the whistle on things that are happening in various sectors and the consequences thereof, of course, they would put many people off of wanting to whistle blow. Now, another massive story below this day newspaper. Uh, this is from Senator Adeni Adegbomire of Ondo State Central, excuse me, and he says, Donald Duke is wrong. We can screen, confirm acting CJN after swearing in, says Senate. Of course, that's a comment based off of the comment that was made by the former governor, Donald Duke, regarding the process with which the CJ and the new CJN is coming into office. Uh, of course, another conversation to be had at great length, and hopefully we'll get to hear from Donald Duke as well. Very quickly to the new Telegraph, uh, which is talking about, again, leading with whistleblowers. FG recovers 83 billion naira via whistleblowers. Massive headline, though, digital security. NCC insists on September 14th deadline for NIN SIM linkage uncovers cases of individuals with over 100,000 SIM cards. And um, they also report that 153 million SIM cards have successfully been linked to The Guardian, which also leads with the same story, which is NIN SIM linkage and national security. Fresh anxiety as FG disconnects 50 million unlinked SIMs September 14. So two major concerns. The first concern is we saw what happened at the end of July when a number of people were disconnected there was a lot of chaos and mayhem around it. Now, as September 14 is just two weeks away, we hope that there's some sort of coordination that will happen to encourage people to link their SIM cards in an orderly way and avoid what almost turned into riots that we saw at some offices of telcos at the end of July. Now, uh, apart from that, the other issue at hand is the digital security, the NIN, we see the emphasis on this policy, which is a fantastic policy. However, we also see how uh, people who purport themselves to be bandits, terrorists, criminals, criminals of all nature, have started parading themselves on TikTok and Good other social device. media platforms. And why can we not track these people down? Who Good come, point. some of them stream live and they show the money that they've accumulated from their ransom. Uh, and, you know, so we ask ourselves, yes, NIN, SIM linkage, fantastic policy, but what is happening to implement it with the crimes that we're seeing being per per uh, perpetrated already? Quickly now to the Daily Trust. Another massive development happening. Flooding kills over 170 in 15 states. 107,000 hectares of farmlands and 80,000 houses have been destroyed. Now, NEMA warns of severe incidents in September, October, and President Tinubu has urged for speedy action on environmental concerns, uh, and this predominantly is affecting some of the northern states, but this is a massive concern. Also at the top there of Daily Trust now talks about a fresh diphtheria outbreak, which has claimed 40 lives in Kano. We know diphtheria, cholera, they're waterborne diseases. So when there's issues around flooding, there's, it's a high risk environment. Uh, so we know we need to pay close attention to that. The image on the front page of Daily Trust, 
is about the, it, it contains images of the police parading those who are in custody following the clash with members of the Shia sect in Abuja uh, over the weekend. Now, one thing that stands out from these images is that a lot of the people in police custody for those clashes are actually women, and you'll see some children there as well. So uh, I, I believe the police will give us more information as time goes on. Quickly to the Punch newspaper, still focusing on that flooding. The government plans evacuation camps as flood hits 28 states. Flooding affects 133 local governments and over 500,000 people. The president has, of course, promised to bring aid to the situation. We can't overemphasize climate change. Are we ready? Are we doing what needs to be done? Clearly, we're not yet there. Now, let's move to Vanguard. Vanguard is leading with a conversation that's dominating the public space right now. It's not going anytime, anywhere anytime soon, and rightfully so. WASCI, the West African Secondary School Certificate. So the National Assembly has also waded into the age controversy that's saying that uh, one must be 18 years of age before they can sit for that secondary school examination. Uh, well, former Vice President, excuse me, Atiku, has chimed in. He says that it's archaic. Um, and he says that the federal government is acting like a military regime. Now, uh, some CSOs are calling it draconian, and others are saying that it will lead to capital flight. So there's a big conversation happening around that, and I do hope that we continue it and we unpack it in further detail. Quickly to the African papers, the Daily Graphic in Ghana is leading with security issues as uh, President Nana Kufa Ado encourages that the region must unite to fight terrorism, a call that, of course, we can relate with uh, here in Nigeria as well. The Citizen South Africa, <clears throat> excuse me. The Citizen South Africa, I'll just focus on the main image there, which is snow on Table Mountain in Cape Town, which is unheard of this time of the year because the 1st of September is usually spring day when everybody packs away their blankets and their coats. So at this time of the year to be seeing snow is absolutely unheard of, although it's very beautiful to, to take a look at. Uh, let's go to USA Today. Internationally, USA Today. USA Today is all about the US economy right now, leading with this beautiful infographic and is saying the American dream, how much now? Now, this report is talking about how inflation has families struggling to pay for the good life. It has broken down the cost of what is called the American dream. So, the total income that is needed to live the American dream per year is now estimated to be $178,000. Do the calculation, that's now 285 million naira. So uh, that number has gone up by 36% or $47,000 uh, in the past decade. So the good news is that some household incomes have grown by 46%, but the bad news is that only one in eight households earn enough to afford the American dream. And of course, we know both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have emphasized the American dream, restoring the American dream in their campaigns. The question is, how will they manage the situation that has become a sore point for American households. So that is the newspaper review in a nutshell. I'm trying okay. to do that as quickly as so, possible. So the question we should also ask is, what is this American dream? A house? A car? So they're saying the mortgage. house with a picket fence for a family of four, with uh, one car. They've detailed it in, in the report. Uh, so what they call so, the standard American uh, family yeah. unit. So there's also questions. You, uh, that's a good question because there's also questions about what 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 does a family unit so look what does like a family in this unit look like? So, so, But for I them, mean, it's so, a family so, of four. So, so I, I think we should also dig deeper because the ideas of families have even also shifted. And I think that American Dream is typified here was sort of like the 1930s American dream, where there was mass industrialization. Probably you could probably uh, afford to buy a Ford model, uh, a T model Ford, and uh, get a family with four children. And Do people even give back that much these days? What is even the birth rate in America and things like that? So things are gradually tilted. But most importantly, what we're just going to say is this. There's a difference in ideology between the two political parties over the years. This is the plan of 100 years. The Republicans always think of trickle-down economics. They make the rich richer. They hope that the rich will invest in the poor, but it doesn't work like that. The Democrats say, okay, let's just give those tax cuts and everything to the middle-class people. That's the difference in the ideology, and that's for the American people to be able to decide. As regards Nigeria and what works in our ecosystem here, 
Ozzy is shouting in my ear what next person, but I, I, I think we'll, we'll yield the floor. Yeah. 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 We'll yield the floor, I okay. need to respect. So we, so, have a, yeah. we have quite a debate or a conversation next, so I can understand the um, time management. But let me just talk about NIN SIM linkage and the point you make about um, what the information is being used for. Let me just say September, so that people don't start um, picketing offices of these mobile teleco telecommunication offices like we saw earlier this year. But to know that the deadline is, I think, September 14th um, is the deadline. And 14. So make sure if you're not linked, especially for those who have multiple SIM cards, it's not one is not enough. You have to link all your SIM cards to your NIN. But talking about what Professor Pantami, Issa Pantami, the previous minister um, of, of the digital minister had said was that this would help to combat banditry, kidnapping and the likes because you'll be able to trace everyone. Well, like you said, we haven't seen, in fact, the numbers have increased yeah. over the years. So what is the essence of making people go through the, um, you know, the, the, the hurdles of linking if you're not going to use it for the purpose for which it was used for? We thought crime would have been, you know, would be minimal mm -hmm. at the moment as a result of the fact that now you can identify anyone tied to the phone. Even if it was someone else that registered, you can find, you know, you can find who the person was and trace it that way. But Guess what? People that have been targeted, people who are revealing information on social media, on X accounts. So it's still the people who are victimized as opposed to the criminals who should be brought to book. So unfortunately, let's see how this minister would make this scheme work. But just to say, people, make sure you link your NIN to your SIM cards. Okay, the stories that interest me today. Front page of a Punch newspaper. Uh, Punch is saying that the Bankers Committee, the story is also in this day uh, newspaper, He's saying that the Bankers Committee have announced the completion and renovation of the National Theatre of Nigeria. They've been uh, able to sort out, you know, the entrances, the main bowl, uh, which can sit up to about 4,000 people, the banquet hall, which can sit up to about four, uh, over 3,000 people, uh, 300 uh, toilet cubicles have been provided, you know, air conditioning has been provided. So it's good, it's exciting to see that the National Theatre, you know, has been finally renovated. That National Theatre was built from the Goan administration and completed by uh, President uh, Olusha Gwambasunjo, and then used for the uh, uh, FESTAC uh, uh, festival, the, the World Arts Co uh, Festival in 1977. But then it went down. So this renewal of this theatre is very important. And also, it's a way of paying the proper tribute to uh, Professor Wale Shuinka, after whom that National Theatre has been named as the National Center for Arts and Culture, uh, named after Wale Shuinka. And we hope that the grand objective of making it uh, a center for the creative sector, you know, will be uh, achieved. And that they will maintain this beautiful edifice that they are unveiling uh, tomorrow. I got an invitation, but I, I may not be available. But it's good to see that this National Theatre Patterned after the same model in Sofia, uh, Bulgaria, will begin uh, uh, to function. In the UK, uh, uh, Prime Minister Kestama is talking about fuel duty. <laughs> so as it were, it's not only in Nigeria that you have talks about uh, fuel duty increasing uh, uh, pump price of fuel. You know, people are saying Kestama is not keeping his uh, campaign promise not to tax the working class, but he is saying. And Rachel Reeves seems to have been, uh, you know, vindicated when she argued before now that there is a 22 billion uh, pounds black hole that was left uh, by the Conservatives. And that's the main story in The Guardian, saying that, look, the Institute for Fiscal Studies in black and white has now confirmed that indeed the Conservatives, you know, the Tories, uh, underestimated the amount of uh, uh, money of, of black hole you know, that they left uh, behind. So 5p increase in the UK likely in the October budget. So it's not only in Nigeria. Although in Libya, they've suspended the head of their national oil corporation because of what? Well, accused. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. Thank you very much.